Very bien, perfecto. Hello, welcome uh, to the Jenkins Governance uh, meeting. Today is uh, October 14th. Uh, we have uh, several contributors on the call, Alex, Ilya uh, Hafner, Mark Waite, and me. Uh, today we will go through the common agenda. We have some news to share, then we will talk about trademark uh, usage requests we received over the past week. Uh, we will uh, talk about ongoing um, uh, Jenkins uh, elections. Um, awaiting officer role definitions and yes, schedule the next meeting. Basically, that's it. You might get more topics uh, during the call if somebody else joins. Uh, but yeah, um, let's start from the agenda. So, October 1st. Mm, yeah, we're actually in the middle of October 1st, uh, so it's a month long event. Uh, we have uh, a number of feature projects uh, published there, and we need to see a number of contributions in these feature projects. So, so far, so good. Uh, today, we had an online meetup to talk specifically about Jenkins documentation and contributing to Jenkins. Uh, we've got uh, um, uh, how many? Well, uh, 20 participants a day in total or so. Um, and we will publish uh, the content uh, today. So. Hopefully it will help to facilitate contributions a bit. But yeah, compared to the previous year, Hattoberfest remains uh, relatively slow. Uh, so if anybody is willing to push particular areas, you're welcome to do that. But uh, still we receive uh, contributions we expected. So it's going pretty well. If you are watching uh, this uh, recording and if you want to contribute to Jenkins, this is a good time to do so. Okay, CDCon. So last week we had a CDCon conference. Um, we had uh, a few Jenkins talks there. Also, there was a Jenkins Birds of Fever session where we discussed Jenkins roadmap. And uh, yeah, there were other activities um, in the community booth, well, in the CDM booths. Um, so thanks to everyone who participated. Uh, the conference uh, went well. Uh, the recordings should be published uh, by the end of the month, so stay tuned. And, yeah, we also plan to organize a few events to talk about specific topics today. And yeah, I guess that's it with Silicon. And uh, we don't have any major events planned uh, until December, from what I know. In December, there will be. Uh, Jenkins User Conference in Japan, uh, where we have uh, several speakers. Uh, and yeah, this uh, conference will be entirely about Jenkins. So hopefully we will be able to have a remote booth there. Usually it's not an option, but since everything is remote uh, this uh, year, maybe we could do that. Um, okay. Uh, on the technical side, uh, last week we had uh, an LCS release. Mark, would you like to would you like to summarize it? Yeah. So 2.249.2 was released last week uh, with a fix for a regression in one area and a few other improvements to Jenkins 2.249.1. The release automation worked without a hitch, flawlessly. It was great. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And yeah, quite a number of uh, fixes delivered. Okay, and the next LTS version. So on October 21st, according to our schedule, we will be selecting a new baseline. Um, so if anyone is interested, please submit your feedback. Yesterday we had uh, a common weekly release. So unless something terrible happens, um, we will have only one release until the baseline selection. And uh, what it means is that uh, yeah, if you see any regressions, and it yeah, looks like there are some regressions reported, uh, yeah, it's now. Yeah, the warning is like when, warning plugin does not work anymore in 261. I don't know what's broken. Yeah, so some, well, we updated JT. What could possibly go wrong? Okay. Yep. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the point because uh, yeah, next week we will be doing a selection. And if you scroll down, uh, the well, um, the last releases uh, were not the stable, I would say. So actually, 58, 
57 was the last release when uh, you had no regressions reported. Uh, so uh, yeah, we will uh, have a choice either to take something recent, uh, do big porting, and for that we will need uh, information for the next meeting so that we can make uh, decisions whether we can backport uh, things in time for that one. Or we proceed with conservative way, but yeah, in such case it will exclude a lot of changes. So let's see. Yeah, the, the decision uh, will be made next week. So I guess Oliver will start a thread uh, for selection, uh, selecting a new baseline soon. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to uh, stabilize it in the next weekly so that we don't have uh, to worry about the regressions. Okay. Any other news, comments? Okay, then uh, we have uh, two trademark usage requests, one from TechMatrix, another one from uh, WebSoft9. Um, and yeah, basically these requests uh, ask for Jenkins trademark usage. So currently we do not have specific pre-approved patterns and uh, every request should go through the Jenkins governance meeting to be approved. And yes, there are two requests uh, we received. So one uh, is for TechMatrix uh, Jenkins support as a trademark, and another one is for Jenkins on Ubuntu by WebSoft 9. So we need to make a decision on that. And yeah, for that, I added additional topic to discuss is whether it's a good time to actually start uh, enforcing uh, Linux Foundation uh, patterns. Because, uh, yeah, as a part of migration from uh, SPI to Continuous Delivery Foundation, uh, we expect to transition trademark uh, to the Linux Foundation. And after that, uh, these trademark usage guidelines would apply to the Jenkins project. So the trademark transition hasn't happened yet, and yeah, we do not have timeline. It's one of the topics uh, we just need to discuss later. Uh, but uh, yeah, the principle that at some point we will need to adopt these guidelines. And actually these guidelines are very reasonable. Uh, so we will refer right to these guidelines uh, since 2016 or so, uh, but we haven't been enforcing them. So uh, well, there is a lot of text, uh, but uh, yeah, important things. Um, that uh, uh, there are pre-approved uh, trademark uh, patterns uh, which are considered as fair use um, and uh, just it would allow to set uh, common uh, rules how these trademarks uh, uh, should be used. Secondly, uh, these patterns seem to be uh, very reasonable and my personal uh, preference would be to proceed with adopting uh, these trademark usage guidelines, even if uh, the trademark is not officially transferred uh, to continuous delivery foundation and Linux foundation at the moment. Maybe I'm, a plus, I'm a plus one on that for sure. Yeah. You could reserve a uh, right uh, to make exception uh, if we really see a need to do so, but Yes, general guidance, I think this will are uh, fine. I do not see any problem with pre-approving these patterns with all the disclaimers added to the list. Um, so for me, uh, this would be the preference. Yeah, it's a good idea, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. So now, do any, of the, do any of the proposals contradict or violate the guidelines that Linux Foundation offers here? both uh, contradict both and uh, okay. yeah so let me open approved trademarks so yeah this list is a bit dated uh, it's actually my fault uh, because uh, last time when i was approving trademark for jenkins rule it was uh, last uh, spring I took an action item to migrate this page uh, to Jenkins IO, well, basically somewhere. 
then we had a discussion about how we store uh, governance uh, documents and we agreed that we can move these uh, pages to Jenkins IO. And now I have an action item to actually do that. But if you take um, a look at the list of these trademarks uh, we previously approved, so the situation is, I guess, none of them actually fits the pattern. So uh, there are multiple reasons why it happens. Firstly, because, uh, well, basically, if you want to use a, an existing trademark, you would uh, want to put uh, the popular ter term in the front. And many trademarks have Jenkins in the beginning. Uh, some uh, trademarks have first uh, put the company name, uh, then uh, the trademark name, then for example, called Miss Jenkins. It's quite popular. And, and uh, yet, uh, yeah, this is how um, um, trademarks are usually organized. So that's what we have. And none of that uh, is compliant with uh, Linux Foundation trademark guidelines. So for me, firstly, whatever we do, we wouldn't apply this uh, guidance retrospectively. So whatever we have already approved is approved. Uh, well, when Linux Foundation started, uh, they had exactly the same case because yeah, there is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, but yeah, it also doesn't fit uh, these trademark guidelines. Uh, so I think that uh, for us it's generally good, but if you take a look at these trademarks, you can just break them down, but uh, none of them really uh, is really compliant. So Jenkins uh, on Ubuntu by WebSoft. So yeah, Jenkins in the front uh, on Ubuntu as additional code support, uh, which is uh, another trademark being used. Uh, and I'm not sure how it should be approved in this case, but yeah, I guess it's not our problem. Uh, but yeah, this pattern uh, doesn't work. So it could be, for example, yeah, uh, so WebSoft uh, and uh, distribution uh, for Jenkins, uh, or WebSoft 9 Ubuntu distribution for Jenkins, etc. All of that uh, would uh, fit uh, this trademark, but not uh, like it's written now. Pretty much the same uh, for other trademark. So it's a tech matrix Jenkins support. So this case uh, is a bit more tricky because even if it doesn't uh, match the trademark as is, uh, we have a precedent uh, when uh, another similar trademark was approved, uh, basically Cloudbeast Jenkins support and Cloudbeast Jenkins accept. So okay. even if it doesn't uh, fit uh, the trademark uh, guidelines, uh, they, uh, I rather lean uh, towards uh, saying plus one for that, if they prefer this pattern. Well, I would still recommend uh, the Linux Foundation pattern. So I think if we have an, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. After you, Alex. I was just gonna say, since we haven't adopted the Linux Foundation uh, usage yet, um, I think we have to go with what the precedent is. So I think we need to plus one that for now. And then once we adopt the um, new naming conventions, we can specify that those override previous precedents um, and new requests should meet the these, the the Linux Foundation pre-approved patterns going forward. Mm -hmm. That's my my take. And I think the, the, the tech matrix example, for instance, if I read it correctly, could be could be pretty easily changed if they were willing to do tech matrix support for Jenkins. That fits with at least one pattern that the Linux Foundation seems to use. Yeah. Uh, we shouldn't. We we don't get to change their proposed trademark. I understand that. I was just thinking, it's they're not that far from the the pattern that seems to be okay with Linux Foundation guidelines. Yeah. So here my recommendation would be to recommend them to consider uh, Linux Foundation pattern as our preference, but uh, still approving uh, the current trademark if they want to do so. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. So so just to be clear, that would give them approval for tech matrix 
Jenkins support and implicit and approval for if they chose it, tech matrix support for Jenkins. Yep. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Tech matrix enterprise support, commercial support. It's basically their own and choose how they promote uh, that and how they choose the name. But yeah, as long as it remains within the pre approved trademark pattern, uh, they don't even need to agree with us. Uh, there are some uh, exceptions, of course, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, they should still should avoid confusion, etc. So this pattern uh, might still be a problem, so it's not guaranteed in all cases. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that we uh, should be able to pre approve it. Everyone was a uh, plus one for that, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, from yes. Um, not applying requirements retrospectively. Everything uh, remains approved. Um, yeah. Uh, until uh, the transition is over. Make exceptions. Okay, see, I'm saying for the approved mark. Capture it well. Any ad additional uh, notes we would like to add there? So that covers the tech matrix one. Could we go back to the WebSoft 9 one? Or is or were you planning okay. to do that already? Yeah, so let's uh, finish with them first. I was just uh, yeah. making a common notes. So yeah, this is uh, WebSoft. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, matrix. Support is approved. We are going to, in the approval message, also say, you know, we are looking at um, adopting these these forms, if you could change to this, that would be even better, but we do approve your, the tech matrix yep. support Jenkins support. Okay. Yeah. Uh, totally right. I recommend uh, using the uh, LF pattern. Uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, does it capture it well, Alex? Yep, looks good, thank you. Okay, then uh, we go to, oh, matrix down, uh, WebSoft 9. Um, okay, so basically we received uh, this request uh, through Jenkins government support channels. So basically the original request uh, from them was uh, to confirm whether they need to ask for trademark approval. So basically they reached out to us to confirm and we provided clarification. Uh, there is already hosting with this name. Uh, so they open uh, to adjust this name as we agree, I guess. And uh, yeah, hence uh, the request. So the problem with that, that Jenkins on Ubuntu by WebSoft 9, it doesn't match uh, existing patterns by Linux Foundation and doesn't really match uh, the precedent. At least I don't see a trademark which would be clearly returned to the same pattern. Is Jenkins Jumpstart by CloudBees a close enough approximation? Or 
Robert Jenkins Virtuoso Workshop. I mean, it's not really yeah. on, so it's it's clearly not an exact match. Yes. Yeah, yeah, firstly, this one's, yeah, the trademark usage names, but uh, they're not uh, product names, so they're not distributions, it's ju uh, they're just uh, workshops and whatever. Mm, Here, yeah, basically, they ask permission uh, for product, Jenkins on Ubuntu. Uh, yeah, we have Jenkins on Ubuntu, um, basically, we provide official distribution for Ubuntu. What they actually do is provide uh, AWS marketplace entry where you can get it running. So for me, it's not only, so it's potentially causes confusion. Uh, and uh, secondly, it doesn't really represent what they do. Because so, it's, uh, so is this what they are asking for right here, how it would appear here? Or are they asking to update this to say, Jenkins on, on on Ubuntu by as the whole thing at the top. Uh, I guess this is one of the options because what we request from other vendors that a trademark uh, must be used as a full name always. Well, so what, the example, reason I'm asking. So if you go back to the AWS Marketplace thing, right? Yep. So you so, see uh, Jenkins on Ubuntu by WebSoft here. Right, is that what they're wanting or are they just wanting how it appears here? Because here I think it's confusing, right? Yeah. Because it just says Jenkins on Ubuntu and mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, is this the official image? Is it not the official image? Who, who's WebSoft 9? But if it's, if, mm -hmm. if they change the title, the full title to be Jenkins on Ubuntu by WebSoft 9, I think that mm -hmm. would differentiate it from being um, like an official Jenkins on Ubuntu so from the Jenkins progress. So that's my question is, is where are they, you know, mm -hmm. is that going to be updated or not? Oh, I guess it uh, has to be updated. Uh, because yeah, for me, yeah, no way I would vote just for Jenkins on Ubuntu. Jenkins on Ubuntu by WebSoft 9. Yeah, I agree with you, Alex, that uh, in this case, it uh, provides uh, uh, and update differentiate uh, at least from our side point of view. Again, it's not our problem uh, whether they contact Canonical to get approval for Ubuntu, etc. Right. It's uh, their job. But yeah, we can request uh, the full name uh, to be used everywhere. So on the um, approved trademark usage from, from Linux Foundation. I thought I had seen something where it had the on nomenclature, but maybe I, oh no, it was the for, for use with. Yeah, none of these uh, trademarks actually uh, qualifies. So yeah, it could be, let's say, WebSoft 9 uh, distribution uh, for Jenkins, which would clarify. Or Web9 uh, AWS package for Jenkins or whatever. This one's qualified. But there is no trademark where Jenkins will go to the front. Right. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a precedent on this one and it doesn't follow the Yep. the Linux foundation, so. Okay, so what would be your preference, Alex? So I, I would say them moving their name first, like is kind of the pattern in the, the Linux foundation. So WebSoft 9, Jenkins on Ubuntu, or something similar. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, requiring for them to follow the Linux Foundation pattern. Yeah. Do we so for adopting those guidelines? Are we um, now that we've plus one that we're we're basically now going to apply those going forward? Correct. Why not? So okay. we still need to document that. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, it's perfectly fine if we apply it uh, to all the requests we discuss. Yeah, I would say currently a negative one for their current proposal. 
from me based on, on the Linux Foundation examples and um, yeah, so I don't know if we want to come back with suggestions for them or if we just point them to that um, page and say, please look at these examples and uh, give us another proposal. Okay. Because there is no precedent for that form, that pattern. Okay. So would we accept if they were to, or is there one of the existing patterns that might fit more closely than something that complies with Linux Foundation guidelines? You mean uh, one of uh, the patterns we have here? Exactly, yeah. The, the, would still fit in the cloud. I didn't see any of those patterns that I thought, oh, I could understand how I might use that. So it feels well, like so a Linux no foundation. Jenkins distribution uh, for AWS. Is there, um, so like on Azure and AWS, there are other Jenkins images. Um, what are those patterns? You mean uh, on the AWS marketplace? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, there is quite a lot actually, and as yes, you may guess, uh, not all of them follow the trademark guidelines. Jenkins certified. like certified by Bitnami, and I yeah, mean... you can start from here. <laughs> Jenkins on Ubuntu, Jenkins on Windows Server 2016, uh, Jenkins with CentOS, uh, Jenkins Container Power uh, by Tools, Jenkins on Ubuntu. Uh, so, so I mean, yeah. If you want none, to be none a of those people, uh, role, you have yeah, a exactly. Yeah, none of those people have requested a sub license. So it is, so I think we should show our appreciation for web, uh, whatever, whatever they are, web, web logic nine, whatever, for actually requesting this sub license. That's, that's very, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, not nice, but yeah. thumbs up to them, right? So at, at least they are doing that. So, um, I, I think we don't have to bend over backwards for them, but you know, we can try to help mm -hmm. them out with suggestions or something like that. So maybe yep. we, maybe that's how we do it. Yeah, that's for sure. There's a ton of images on there. Well, Linux Foundation even has logo usage uh, guidelines. Actually, it's a good question of what would happen with Jenkins logos after that. Uh, but uh, yeah, our logo isn't trademarked from what I know. Mm -hmm. And our logo is under Creative Commons, so it's, it's, a, it's not a concern for me in the foreseeable future. But yeah, cleaning up uh, these things, it would make there, sense. There are lots of pages there. I have more important things to do. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so there is some precedent that we haven't, you know, contacted these companies either, mm -hmm. right? With their usage of the trademark. So, do I'm I'm kind of now backpedaling a little bit on my minus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Not that's not, not, not that it's okay for those other. Um, companies to have done that necessarily, but there is a precedent out there, and there, this company is the only one who's actually <laughs> contacted us about it. Yeah. So it's no longer minus one. Is it minus zero or whatever? Yeah, I, I would say that. I, I, I think because there's a bunch of stuff out there already, and we haven't mm -hmm. gone and contacted those companies about the trademark, I, I think we need to be a little bit more lenient. I think going, you know, now that we know this, we either have to go and contact these companies and say, hey, we have a procedure for requesting to use the Jenkins trademark, you know, and things like that. And, but I don't know, that's a lot of work. I don't know if we want to do or not. Well, that's a lot of work. Of course, uh, there is a nuclear tactics reaching out to AWS and uh, raising a trademark dispute on uh, the search base. So I'm not sure how it goes. And uh, to be honest, uh, I don't think it's appropriate. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
So yeah, because we, we want more people using Jenkins, right? So yeah. no, but we, also, we also have to protect the trademark so that there's not a, you know, someone provides a container that totally screws up everything and then someone gets a bad um, image of Jenkins. So we, we just have to be careful about both of those things, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I will say I'm a minus zero or a plus zero. <laughs> okay. That's very helpful, I know. <laughs> well, Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. So I also don't have strong or minus one about that, that's for sure. If it was Jenkins on Ubuntu by Webs of Nine, uh, yeah, I think it would be also okay for me. But, okay. Uli, uh, Mark, uh, what do you think? I, I'm okay actually with Jenkins on Ubuntu by Webs of Nine for this, this request. I think I'm plus one for it because they asked. Uh, now, as a general pattern, we know we. I think we 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 have already agreed we want to go to Linux guidelines, uh, but for this they asked. I have no no objections to granting it so long as they use the full phrase. I agree with Oleg that Jenkins on Ubuntu Ubuntu as listed there leaves me uncomfortable. Right, just like Jenkins with CentOS seven, it's. It's not clear to me who's providing it in the title. It's not clear to me. Mm -hmm. I also don't know. Well, at least this is cheap. <laughs> uh, surprising but, for a t Windows tw Server 2019. Yeah, that's what I mentioned. It's T2 medium. So, so can you go back? Um, mm -hmm. Back one. So there's also, or one more, sorry. There's also this uh, what it, supported images. Is that an, an Amazon, that Jenkins on Ubuntu 18.04? I guess it's a company. Oh, it is a company, okay. Uh, yeah, supportedimages.com or well, okay. I have no idea what uh, this company is. So they had a similar thing, Jenkins on Ubuntu 18.04, mm. so. Yeah, taking this site, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how many people are in this company, but like okay, one, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, well, again, uh, it's probably a valid use case from our standpoint. Again, any vendor is welcome to provide their packaging. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, trademark is what we need to secure here. Yeah, so, so like those Jen Jenkins con container powered by Intus, I think that's fine usage. Yeah, uh, because yeah, it's not a Linux Foundation trademark, but uh, I wouldn't have concern about that. So as yeah. long as uh, there is clear differentiation in the name, uh, uh, like Jenkins powered by class method. Yeah, okay. Jenkins don't get container. No, it's not okay. Right. Uh, yeah. So it looks uh, like they also can... have so the Amazon as well for WebSoft 9. They had Jenkins on Amazon Linux. Well, yeah, we can uh, go far. For example, we can discuss whether Microsoft requested uh, trademark approval for the official images on uh, Asia. But right. uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, it's something uh, you can figure out uh, as we go. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm not really sure we are ready to invest in cleaning up this mess. Those some images should be just removed because of security concerns. There is, well, you know, they just create clear uh, risk to users. Yeah, I'm not sure what's uh, AWS policy on that. I'm definitely not ready to spend time uh, working with vendors uh, directly. Yeah. We so I'm, I'm a plus one now. You guys okay. have convinced me. <laughs> okay. It's like that yeah. movie, 12 Angry Men, right? Mm -hmm. 
but only if there is the company name in S last thing. Okay. Yes. Uh, distinction Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, likely to approve it uh, uh, going forward. But, yeah, you can document it. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I guess so. And uh, I still have an action item uh, to the, uh, create a new trademark page on Jenkins IO. So, Mark, since uh, you are interested uh, in doing so, uh, what's your preference? Doing it uh, on my plate or doing it? Given given the burden that you carry, I'd be happy to take it on if you don't mind. Okay. So I'm I am happy to do it and willing. That way you can keep focus on other things. It's hard to reject the software. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, that's, okay. I'll, I'll submit the pull request for to migrate the trademark page to some place. I assume a dedicated page on Jenkins.io is a good thing, just like we have on the wiki today. Okay. So, we have Jenkins.io trip. No, we don't. So, what uh, I would rather recommend, so first I have it under the project, because under the project is uh, protected area which basically requires approval from the board. And here you can just introduce a new trademark section. Uh, then we can uh, take the yeah, content of this page, maybe document some recommendations, basically taking uh, what uh, Linux Foundation documents with, with proper attribution. And uh, yeah, also we have this governance document which looks much better than it uh, looked uh, one year ago. But uh, yeah, so there is also a trademark here. So oh, this good. part okay. uh, will need uh, to be either moved or deduplicated. Uh, I believe that uh, all content here is perfectly valid at the moment. But uh, okay. uh, most likely we will need to migrate uh, trademark, trademark attribution. Uh, yeah. By the way, yeah. Uh, okay. So, I guess all this content uh, should be removed, and we just take in hyperlink. Well, and, and I have a. I need to find a way to do redirects of interior content content anyway for another purpose. So this is a great excuse to be sure I can do that here as well. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. okay. Thanks for taking that. Uh, any other comments about this topic? Okay, then moving on. Election status. Yeah, I hope it won't take other 40 minutes. So, uh, yeah. Deadline for board and office nominations is tomorrow. We've got uh, some nominations, um, and uh, most likely we will also have more nominations coming at the last moment, like it happened uh, uh, one year ago. But still, we encourage all contributors, uh, including current officers and current board members, to submit their nominations. So that uh, we have a diverse uh, list of candidates, uh, which we can, uh, we can confirm all these uh, candidates and then have uh, a lot of uh, nominees published. But let's see. So 
uh, we got nominations uh, for all roles. So it's not like uh, Review on Fire is having no nominations somewhere. Uh, yes, the nominations still need to be confirmed, but uh, it looks that uh, we are more or less set. Yeah, more nominations would be still good. Uh, more problematic topic for us right now is number of uh, voting registrations because we are quite low there. Um, and uh, since we don't have any announcement mailing list, so if you're not subscribed to the Jenkins developer mailing list, uh, you may miss notifications. I'm actually thinking about uh, asking uh, the infrastructure team to dump uh, uh, a list of uh, maintainers, etc., and at least doing limited distribution, uh, reminding uh, contributors to register for the actions. Have we done anything on social media as well? Yeah, but uh, still uh, contribution uh, registrations are quite low. Yeah, it's it reasons, like 20 or something, right? Yeah, one of the reasons is that, uh, yeah, firstly, it's uh, almost half a month until the deadline. And again, uh, spike usually comes a few days before the deadline. Um, but yeah, I would rather start pushing it earlier. So, uh, Mark, uh, what do you think? Is it feasible to get uh, a dump of uh, maintainers, etc., and uh, do distribution through SendGrid? I think so. Olivier certainly did a distribution through SendGrid last year using the entire LDAP database. Yeah. Uh, a subset that our maintainers, we would, where would we ask that? Is that a question we would ask of GitHub through the GitHub APIs to yeah, so identify maintainers? Oh. We have a repository permission updater. Uh, we have tools uh, which dump uh, lists of uh, uh, maintainers from there. And uh, yeah, we can quickly hold up to retrieve emails if you have uh, proper access. Right, so given, given a GitHub ID, mm -hmm. we can ask our LDAP for the email address associated with that ID and we can notify that. We do not even need GitHub ID because oh, we, uh, we store uh, artifact oh. IDs. Right, we need we need their Jenkins login name is the basic, well known. Basically Jenkins login, yes. Okay, so, all right. Yeah, there are always concerns about that because yeah, we will be basically notifying a subset of our users. And one may argue that notifying through mailing list is also notifying a subset of users because not everyone uh, Watches to them. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about it as uh, an option. We can also yeah, I do think mass it's... distribution, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure we want to do that because last time it yeah. wasn't. Yeah, I'm I'm not in favor of the mass distribution again. I I think last year's experience was was not not good enough for us to say let's do mass distribution again but using the the maintainer generating a list of maintainers seems reasonable would you like me to discuss it with olivier and the infrastructure team to see their assessment of it mm, yeah if it's possible i would appreciate that okay Yeah, we can also do another push through social media. Um, because, yeah, one thing I discovered uh, last week that yeah, even if you had a Jumbotron here for elections, uh, yeah, this Jumbotron was broken because URL was incorrect and it was uh, pointing to 404. I have fixed it uh, just uh, one week ago or so. Okay. Well, and the fact that we heard no reports that it was 404 is a bad sign, right? That made me no one attempt to even click it. So, ouch. Okay. Yeah, right. So, yeah, basically, I just fixed it a while ago. We can also remove CD corner. I guess it's no longer relevant. So, it would be right. just the uh, first uh, jump button to open. But yes, 
I'm open to other suggestions uh, how we could boost uh, registrations. Uh, is is this one of those where we could ask for Alyssa's help to do some community marketing, some things that might help us get the word out in different ways? Mm, it would be nice. Uh, so I will remove CD Con Jabontron. Later we may restore another uh, CDF uh, Jabontron, but for now I think it's fine. Okay. Alex, Ulya. Any thoughts? Um, I've, I've never had to deal with uh, an election like this before, so I'm not sure I have any um, mm. good ideas, but I, I will definitely think about it. Okay, so we still have some time. Um, Maybe we could ask for um, a strip about joint selections. I published it in the beginning of November. Good timing, yeah. No, we shouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's reconvene next week and see where we stand. I think that one of action item which we need to handle anyway is uh, creating uh, email announcement mailing list, but just for announcements, low traffic one, so similarly how to other projects do. So basically it's subscription mailing list where we announce major news, conferences, events like let's say Hacktoberfest, um, but yeah, it's really limited traffic. It won't help us with these elections, but I think that in general, it would be nice uh, to have it in the community. I think it's a good idea. Think and stash announce, yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, I can uh, take this action item because I was doing it for other projects already. Uh, so, well, it's actually quite easy. The difficult part is to get people uh, subscribed, <laughs> not to having this uh, mailing list. Okay. So I will uh, handle that. And uh, yeah, updating officer definitions. Should we move on to this topic? We just have several minutes left. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So I have finally pushed a, a pull request which uh, summarizes what was proposed in the uh, mailing list. So basically shifting uh, officer role descriptions more towards coordinating the things and the leading uh, the teams, not doing everything on their own. Actually, yeah, it was implied expectation for a long time before when we started producing six working groups, uh, but uh, the documentation was quite different. So, I started uh, rewarding quite a bit, and the yeah, current state. Uh, just a second. So current state uh, looks like that. So I added some documentation, and you can see that I named uh, uh, the page from Jenkins team leads to team leads and officers. This assumption that there are two types of roles. Team leads are basically uh, roles appointed uh, by the Jenkins governance meeting, uh, leading particular teams, let's say hosting team, uh, like we introduced uh, last summer, etc. And the Jenkins officer is an elected role. So the distinction basically appointment process, but in principle it also remain uh, the same uh, with regards to responsibilities. Uh, there are common responsibilities coordinating the work uh, inside the teams and six to the lead, onboarding new contributors, membership and knowledge sharing, ensure officer rotation. 
uh, yeah, wording uh, probably needs to be changed. I just wanted uh, to put it explicitly to highlight that it's not only onboarding uh, new contributors, but also implementing uh, a ladder within uh, the team so that uh, contributors uh, could uh, basically adopt uh, other roles and eventually be able to take uh, the key roles in the community. Uh, then facilitating initiatives, maintaining the team's roadmap, ensuring the initiatives are reflected on the public Jenkins roadmap. Um, and representing the Jenkins community within the area of their responsibility. It's also something new. Before that, basically, the Jenkins board was uh, responsible for representing uh, the project. Um, well, I think that uh, we should rather accept uh, the de facto state when officers uh, represent uh, the project. For example, Olivier told, talks to dozens of vendors and the infrastructure, Daniel handles uh, security contacts, uh, and also, uh, yeah, other officers also do such communications here and there. Um, yeah, basically many contributors act on behalf of the project, but I see no reason why team leads and officers shouldn't do that. So that's why I put this item. And then uh, yeah, one common, uh, Mm, responsibilities. This one probably still uh, need, it still needs to be polished uh, to uh, more focus on continuing the work and leading the work. Uh, but yeah, uh, some wording changes have been already applied, and uh, the event officer uh, um, definition uh, has been completely rewritten. As we discussed at the last meeting, uh, this uh, is plus one for the current uh, description. Uh, and, and yeah, we probably should update that. Okay, so I'm not sure whether we are ready to vote for that today, but it would be nice to vote for that next week so that um, officer terms are finalized when we announce the nominations. Sounds good. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. good with that. Mm -hmm. So I would ask uh, everyone to just review the list and if you see any other improvements which we could do or changes we need uh, to make, uh, please uh, highlight that. Again, uh, this document is not something uh, which we need to finalize for one year. We can uh, gradually improve it after the elections, but I think it would be important to update these expectations uh, before the cycle happens. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you for doing this update. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there is a lot of typos also. I will fix that. Okay. So, yeah, needs reviews. Okay. Anything on uh, role definitions? Mm. Approving it on uh, October 21. Uh. Any other topics or just next meeting, taking the time? Nope, not for me. So, yeah, my proposal would be to have uh, the next meeting next week. Yeah, I know that uh, the schedule was a bit chaotic already, but uh, yeah, actually next week uh, would return us uh, to the normal schedule, plus it will be LTS baseline selection, so I think it will be important. And Sounds good to me. Okay. And, uh, yeah, also an open question about the timing, because uh, I'm not sure whether you want to keep uh, this time uh, for governance meetings. Uh, I'm not sure how for Ulya, for me, this is a bit late. Uh, and many other contributors from Europe expressed uh, concern that it's too late. And at the same time, it's not too late uh, so that uh, the Asian and Pacific region can participate. Yeah, I'm actually. fine with moving it up, if that would be helpful to, um, mm -hmm. to you and Uli, for sure. Me, uh, me as well. Earlier in the day is better for me. 
Yeah. Yeah, so or, whatever we do, I suggest to make it effective only in November after summer time, winter time changes are over. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it would be nice uh, to start to do or whatever and uh, agree on times. And maybe we should wait for the election because uh, different people come in and... Yeah, fair point. They have other ideas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, totally fair because yeah, you have uh, five officers and two board members for rotation. So, yeah, I agree with you then after elections. I'm good with that. Okay. And that's it. So thanks everyone, especially for productive discussion about the trademarks. So we have a clear path there. And yeah, let's keep working on the elections and uh, other topics. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>